step into the world of My Fair Lady, a 1964 film that weaves a captivating tale of transformation and wit. This classic has a lot more up its sleeve than meets the eye. Brace yourself for a roller coaster of funny, shocking, and sad revelations. What enduring qualities make it a timeless symbol of the industry? Have you ever been personally inspired or impacted by this cinematic gem? As you embark on this cinematic journey, keep your eyes peeled for moments that might just strike a chord with you. Whether it's the humor, the surprises, or the poignant scenes, there's something for everyone. Now we're curious, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic gem? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We would love to hear your take. Strap in for an exploration of my fair lady's depth and charm. There's more to this classic than meets the eye, and your insights could add another layer to the narrative. Stay tuned for more revelations and let the conversation begin. In the heart of 1960s, a cinematic brilliance emerges a timeless gem that captivates audiences with its enchanting narrative and memorable characters. Picture this, the bustling energy of a bygone era where elegance and societal norms dance in a delicate balance. Enter a cinematic masterpiece that transcends its time, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of film history. This marvel, directed by the legendary George Cukor, unfolds against the backdrop of 1912 London as it traces the transformative journey of a working-class flower girl into a poised and refined lady. Adapted from George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion, the film not only captures the essence of its source material, but elevates it to new heights thanks to the stellar performances of Audrey Hepburn as the protagonist and Rex Harrison as the distinguished linguistics professor Henry Higgins. Resonating not only for its captivating storyline, but also for its exquisite portrayal of societal intricacies and class dynamics, the movie's significance lies in its ability to transcend the confines of its era, addressing themes of identity, self-discovery, and the transformative power of education. The lush cinematography and memorable musical numbers further enhance its allure, making it a cinematic experience that stands the test of time. As the credits roll, one cannot help but marvel at the enduring legacy of this classic, which continues to be celebrated for its cultural impact and artistic brilliance. A true testament to the artistry of its creators, the TV movie remains a cherished piece of cinema that has left an indelible mark on the hearts of audiences around the world. In the world of classic cinema, it stands tall as a beacon of storytelling excellence, inviting viewers to embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. A film that not only intrigues, but also resonates with the human experience, it remains an iconic piece of cinematic history, etched into the collective memory of film enthusiasts. Set in 1912, though some sources suggest an earlier time frame, the film My Fair Lady depicts Eliza's transformation. To maintain the flower girl's initial awkwardness, Audrey Hepburn, under Cecil Beaton's insistence, wore weights around her lower legs during the early stages of her character's evolution. The Escott Gava sequence stands out as the entire scene unfolds in shades of black, white, and gray. Audrey Hepburn's entrance is particularly striking due to the stark contrast of her pure white dress with green stripes, lilac, and red decorations against the relatively muted colors of the preceding musical number. These details, sourced from a reputable website, shed light on the meticulous choices made in the film's production, emphasizing historical accuracy and visual impact. The movie captures the essence of Eliza's journey and stands as a testament to the thoughtful decisions made in its creation. Sir Rex Harrison initially expressed disappointment with Audrey Hepburn's casting as Eliza Doolittle in the 1964 movie. He believed she was badly miscast, and having hoped to work with Dame Julie Andrews, remarked, Bloody Audrey has never spent a day in her life out of European ballrooms. Despite this, Harrison later identified Audrey Hepburn as his favorite leading lady in My Fair Lady, a statement widely perceived as catering to her fan base. The film is an adaptation of the original Broadway production, which opened at the Mark Hellinger Theater in New York on March 15, 1956. This production holds the record for the longest run on Broadway at the time, with two 717 performances. Rex Harrison and Stanley Holloway reprised their roles in the movie, with Harrison winning the 1957 Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical. The show itself received the 1957 Tony Award for Best Musical. In a notable scene, Alfred's acceptance of pound five from Henry is equivalent to approximately 700 in the modern era. 
This financial exchange adds a practical dimension to the film, emphasizing the socioeconomic disparities central to the narrative. These insights, drawn from a reputable source, shed light on the casting dynamics, the Broadway origins, and a subtle yet impactful detail within the film. They provide a broader understanding of the historical and financial context that enriches the narrative of My Fair Lady. The 1964 movie My Fair Lady, a notable Warner Brothers production, stood out as the studio's most expensive film at $17 million during its time. Despite the hefty investment, it emerged as one of the highest-grossing movies in 1964. The financial success contrasted sharply with initial skepticism about the film's cost. In a curious detail, many of the fashionable ladies featured in the Escott Devot sequence also appeared as barmaids and pub customers in the I'm Getting Married in the Morning number, highlighting the versatile roles played by the ensemble cast. Tragically, Henry Daniel, who portrayed the ambassador, filmed his final scene on October 31, 1963. Director George Cuker, recognizing Daniel's unwell appearance, sadly witnessed the 69-year-old actor's sudden death from a heart attack later that Halloween night at his home in Santa Monica, California. This marked the conclusion of Daniel's seventh collaboration with Cuker. These insights, sourced from a reputable website, offer a glimpse into the financial dynamics, behind-the-scenes details, and the unfortunate end of an actor's career within the production of My Fair Lady, providing a broader perspective on the film's intricate development. Sir Rex Harrison, eager for the role of Professor Henry Higgins, declined a screen test, deeming it beneath his dignity. However, he assured producer Jack L. Warner that his movie portrayal would differ from his stage performance. In February 1962, Warner paid a record-breaking $5.5 million for the movie rights, setting an unprecedented amount for intellectual property. This record held until 1978, when Columbia Pictures paid $9.5 million for Annie's rights. Warner Brothers, attempting to conceal the dubbing of Audrey Hepburn's singing, faced backlash upon the movie's release. Despite efforts, the dubbing became evident, leading to an official statement admitting Marnie Nixon's contribution. This triggered criticism, with gossip columnist Hedda Hopper remarking, with Marnie Nixon doing the singing, Audrey Hepburn gives only half a performance. Warner Brothers defended the practice, stating, we've been doing it for years. We even dubbed the barking of Rin Tin Tin. This information, gathered from a reputable source, sheds light on Harrison's approach to the role, the substantial investment in the movie rights, and the controversy surrounding Hepburn's singing, providing additional insights into the production of the film. In the creation of the 1964 movie, Marnie Nixon, an American singer, adapted a Cockney accent for her role in dubbing Audrey Hepburn's singing. The decision to enlist Nixon's voice stirred controversy, with critics expressing mixed opinions about Hepburn's performance as Eliza Doolittle. While some disapproved of the dubbing, others, including esteemed British dramatist Sir John Gielgud, asserted that Hepburn surpassed expectations, even comparing her favorably to Julie Andrews in the same role. Despite playing a 21-year-old character, Audrey Hepburn was 35 at the time of filming. To mitigate the age difference, Jeremy Brett was cast as 20-year-old Freddie Einsford Hill, ensuring a visually harmonious portrayal. This casting decision aimed to maintain a convincing dynamic within the narrative. These details, extracted from a reputable source, provide insights into the vocal challenges faced during production and the nuanced reception of Hepburn's performance. The deliberate casting choices also highlight the industry's considerations in balancing on-screen relationships. In essence, the production of Marnie Nixon's dubbed singing Audrey Hepburn's age-related casting and the critical reception collectively contribute to the multifaceted nature of the film, showcasing the intricacies behind the scenes. These facets offer a comprehensive understanding of the challenges faced and decisions made during the making of the movie, enriching the narrative of this cinematic work.